Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I tend to respond to questions more recently um, and try to make them simple for you to understand. So I hope I'm doing a good job at that. Anyway, um, a few people have asked me about whether or not they should be worried if they're on indefinite leave to remain. Um, the thing is with indefinite leave to remain, it is governed by UK law and permanent residence is governed by EU law. So by being on an indefinite leave to remain, Brexit won't affect you. However, the thing is about being on an indefinite leave to remain, it does mean that you are you still have to apply every time that indefinite leave to remain runs out, you know, runs out. And of course, if it runs out, you're at the mercy of the Home Office to reinstate it. Now, if anything goes wrong and you cannot get your indefinite leave to remain or what some people call permanent residence. The thing is that both of the in, indefinite leave to remain and permanent residence, they are used interchangeably and technically they mean the same thing. The only difference, like I said, is one is governed by UK law, the other is governed by EU law. So what, where the issue will be and what people are finding in waiting and waiting for their ILRs, their indefinite leave to remain to be approved, is that they're on tender hooks waiting to see if it is going to be approved and it can be not approved for a number of reasons. And so if you're here waiting for your ILR to be approved and you don't know, of course you're going to be on tender hooks because it means if it's not approved, you can be repatriated. So technically it has nothing to do with um, Brexit. It has more to do with how the government can use Brexit in order to do what they want to do anyway, which is to reduce the net migration. They reduce the net migration by not approving the indefinite leaves to remain unless you can show that everything is kosher. I'm not quite sure how many people can have everything kosher. And the thing is, is that if you've come into the country, like some, some people have come into the country um, with their parents, or maybe with their grandparents and their grandparents hasn't filed for them yet, or if you came with your mother and she hasn't filed for you yet, or she hasn't got her citizenship yet, and then you are hoping to get your citizenship through your mother, it is very difficult because you can't you can't preempt one. The the mother would have to have had her citizenship before she can apply for her children's citizenship. So if the mother is on an indefinite leave to remain, I'm not quite sure if she can apply. Um, well, she probably, anyway, I'm not even going to go there because I'm not quite sure about that. All I'm saying is that with regard to the indefinite leave to remain, anybody who's on it is vulnerable to repatriation. I'm not going to say deportation. I'm going to say repatriation. They are vulnerable to that. So if you can get um, your citizenship, it's better. But the thing is, the route to the citizenship is through the permanent status. So how do you do that? If you can't get that indefinite leave to remain, which leads to the citizenship, you know, you're kind of in limbo, aren't you? So I think that applies to regardless of where in the world you come from, as long as you're on an indefinite leave to remain, you are vulnerable in the sense that if they're not approving the indefinite leave to remain, you are in limbo and you will not know what's going on until you actually get it. You can just hope that if everything is above board and, um, you know, all your papers are in order and, you know, all those lists of things that I've said in so many of my video, videos, your moral conduct, no time, no, no more than um, 
480 days out of the country, all those kind of stuff, you know, providing everything's up to par. And you will know that because it is written in the forms what the criteria is. And if you go on any website and ask what the criteria is, it will tell you. The only thing is, is that when it does tell you, it's very, very superficial. So it's like, for example, if you're going to be um, filing for your children who are abroad and you say you're, you've been responsible for them and they've been abroad for quite a while and you need to bring them over, you're going to have to show daily what kind of involvement you've had with that child and you're going to have to prove it. It's not enough to send them money every month. And if you can't show that you've been heavily involved in that child's life, you can't then claim that you are going to bring that child over. So all those questions look very superficial on the surface, but there's a mountain on, of evidence that you have to put against each application. You cannot underestimate any of those sections, you know, because everything needs evidence, everything that they're asking you for. And nothing is frivolous. You cannot put forward any frivolous applications. And that's why I always say, you know, you need a lawyer. Make sure you get an approved lawyer. The Law Society can recommend. The www.gov.uk can recommend. The Law Commission can recommend. The Citizens Advice Bureau, they can all recommend um, credible lawyers. Just don't take these ones that are on you know, well, if I'm not, shouldn't say it, don't take them. But if you do find lawyers on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, make sure you check their uh, registration through these organisations I've just mentioned, just so you don't get ripped off. Too many people are trying to exploit this situation and you don't need to be exploited with all the stress you're going through now. So I hope this is helpful. I hope it helps you to understand, you know, um, what the situation is at the moment. That's all for now. Bye bye. Let me do this.